Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Dirk Dudek. Like most of you, I'm a dentist. I'm also the managing director and head of research of the Clean Implant Foundation, a non-profit organization that performs non-biased quality assessments of dental implants since many years. I have some bad news with consequences for all of us in implant dentistry. But I have some good news too. Well, let's start with the bad news and dive right in. Imagine these numbers. In 2019, the US Food and Drug Administration, FDA, released two decades of previously unpublished data, including 2.1 million reports of failed dental implants and more than 100,000 of which referred to 2018 alone. Most of these failures related to a lack of osseointegration. You know better than me that the number of additional unreported losses is likely to be much higher. And maybe this is just the tip of the iceberg. Comments made by manufacturers regarding these figures focus on patients. Patients with unfavorable clinical preconditions and even blame us, the dentists for our lack of experience and training. Is this the whole truth? In our recent quality assessment study, conducted in collaboration with the Charité University here in Berlin, we unpacked more than a hundred different sterile packaged implants in a clean room environment, including ceramic and titanium implants, and performed with these implants elemental analysis of the surfaces in a scanning electron microscope. What I found in the microscope is presumably beyond your imagination. We analyzed all implants in an officially accredited testing laboratory according to ISO 70025. And here is the bad news. Almost every second implant showed alarming impurities unwanted particles from the manufacturing, handling or packaging process. Significant amounts of foreign body particles 1 to 10 micron in diameter and thus small enough for phagocytosis were detected on the sterile implant surfaces. So we found iron, chromium, molybdenum, copper, tin, tungsten, nickel and even major organic contaminations. You may think, should we as dentists really be concerned about using sterile packaged implants with factory-made contamination? I ask an expert who knows better than all of us exactly this. Nice to be here in Gothenburg at the Sagrenska University. If I remember, it's about nearly three years ago that we met in Cape Town the first time. And in the meantime, we established together not only the Clean Implant Foundation, but also the Trusted Quality Mark. Is there a reason that a dentist nowadays has to be concerned not taking everything for granted? It, I, I fear so. I fear that, that uh, I've seen some of the, uh, quite a few actually, of, of the of the images you have produced from these implants and in the beginning I must admit I was astonished that some they could sell some of those implants yeah. to customers that they do so and, and uh, I fear that this may be one of the reasons that we have overlooked in the past that implant impurities that haven't been cleaned away can pose a problem we don't know precisely today mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any, any precise levels of what we can tolerate or the human beings can tolerate or not, but I would certainly prefer things to be clean compared to having to find out where the borderlines are of dangers. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's a, thinking about the threshold, whenever I speak to my colleagues um, coming from the more academic point of view of statistical of data and numbers, if they have a choice to use a clean implant for their relatives, right. the answer is quite easy. They will always choose the one 
without a question mark, right? And, and for myself, not the yeah. least, I would add, <laughs> right? So, so this is this is something that we, 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 we assume, however incorrectly, that the implants that you replace in human bodies are clean. And we have learned, not the least from your studies, that that, that is not the case always. And uh, to me, this is sort of something we have to find out and learn more about, and how to minimize the, 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 the impurities on implant surfaces, that's a major of major importance for the future. The findings themselves and in many cases the reaction of manufacturers to these results are really disturbing. It seems that it is easier to kill the messenger than to take the news seriously. Maybe they should think about the responsibility of the manufacturers of medical devices and get to the bottom of the contamination. Instead of this I heard accusations like Oh, you have caused the particles yourself. You manipulated the images with light and shadow in the dark room of the electron microscope anyway. The particles were melted under the microscope. Pretty hot in this microscope. And impurities cannot be avoided and are not clinically relevant. Okay, okay, okay. This is the smoke screen technique. Hiding behind stupid arguments, no matter how false they are. What about biology? These contaminants on sterile packaged implants, especially organic particles, can cause an uncontrolled foreign body reaction resulting in osteoclastogenesis, an increase of osteoclast cells that mediate bone loss and thus leaving rough areas of the implant surface exposed to bacterial colonization. Additional analysis of these organic contaminants using time-of-flight secondary EMS spectrometry TOFSIMS, revealed thermoplastic materials, synthetic polymers, polysiloxanes and even dodecyl benzene sulfonic acid. Stop. Dodecyl benzene sulfonic acid. DBSA is found in washing detergents and it is a hazardous surfactant according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. This raises a completely different question besides possible bone loss. Can these impurities also have toxic effects? I don't know. I found a really interesting answer in Brisbane, Australia. But moreover, a scientifically based approach as to how we as physicians should basically deal with the problem of the avoidable contamination of medical devices such as a dental implant. So let's go in and ask one of the world renowned experts in toxicology. Professor Jack, we're here in Queensland University at Pace. I came to, to your institute with some questions about the, um, let's say the consequences of contamination on dental implants. What do you think 
from your point of view, the academic point of view, um, do we have to be concerned about avoidable contaminants if it's either surfactant or uh, remnants of laundry detergents like DBSA or silicones on dental implants? Yes. What do you think? Uh, gen generally speaking, um, all the above has got uh, some toxicity. Uh, it could be um, um, nanoparticle, it could be microparticle form, and um, that involves a different scenario of toxicology uh, because the local particle can cause a local reaction, uh, whether it's in mixture or in single. Mm -hmm. So how much of that um, can, can interact with the local environment or also absorb in the bloodstream and carry to the target organ, who knows. I assume we're on the same page and we say if it's avoidable, we have uh, no problem and no question mark, right? Yeah, I, I would think so. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, early stages, you always tend to be on the cautious side, yeah. right? Yeah. The precautionary principle. Okay, so much for the bad news. As a consequence of the obvious lack of quality control in implant manufacturing, the Clean Implant Foundation introduced a globally recognized test procedure in 2017. Our independent organization published a consensus-based guideline with thresholds that lead to the award of the trusted quality mark. The stress procedure and the corresponding analytical process always requires the testing of five implant samples, five implants of the same type. At least two of them are obtained directly from dental practices on a random basis so that the factory man any factory manipulation or the dispatch of particularly clean test samples can be ruled out. Before the seal of approval can be awarded, two members of the Clean Implants Scientific Advisory Board independently review the results of the technical analysis and the clinical documentation of the implant system. The results have to meet the current criteria and the documentation has to give proof of a survival rate of at least 95% over more than two years. Renowned experts such as Thomas Arredson, Anne Vanderberg, Michael Norton, Florian Boyer, Scott Gans, Jaffa Mohi, Luigi Canullo and Hugo de Bruyne. All of them form the Scientific Advisory Board. These experts are responsible for the peer review process. Their signatures on the final clean implant trust quality mark guarantee an unbiased quality assessment. To date, implants that meet the criteria of the quality seal are, for example, the BTI from Spain, Megagen from Korea, Sweden Martina from Italy, Bredent from Germany, the Medentis from Germany again and from France, the Global D. Other systems, including ceramic implants, are currently in the process of analysis. This is how a clean implant looks in detail in the material contrast mapping images. A technique where we collect more than 400 single SEM frames and compile them electronically to form one big image of the complete implant. You can see the surface from the implant's shoulder to the apex in a breathtaking magnification. No cherry picking of nice looking areas. We always have to see the full implant as a basis for any rating. My dear colleagues, it took a lifetime to build up your reputation as a dentist, clinician, and expert in implantology. But how quickly can you lose your reputation by using an unsafe medical device in your practice, in your clinic? As a dentist, patients trust your decision. But using implants of inferior quality for your patients means to risk at the same time. Impurities may induce an uncontrolled foreign body reaction resulting in periimplantitis, bone loss, 
and so on and so on. And thus compromising the clinical outcome and most of all your patient's expectations. And if it turns out badly, you may have to take the additional risk of patient lawsuits for dental malpractice. I guess both risks are avoidable. Instead of only blaming inexperienced clinicians or patients with unfavorable preconditions for the high number of FTA documented implant losses, we should think about the fact that contaminants on sterile packaged implants, in other words, a lack of quality and sterile dirt that is technically avoidable, all these can play a significant role in the incomplete osseointegration of dental implants bone loss in the early healing phase and probably even the failure of the implant. In these difficult and extraordinary times, the very last thing your patients need is a contaminated dental implant in their bones. And now it's up to you. It's time to build up trust. We have two situations. Good if you use one of the certified clean implants that already show the trusted quality mark. You can sleep well tonight. But please do something about it. Pass this information on to patients and colleagues. Inspire confidence with a personalized certificate in your clinic and on your website. If you like any material, we'd be happy to send it. Or if you cannot find information about your favorite implant system on our website, send me a mail. Our database has much more information. So looking forward to your comments or requests. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay healthy.